Welcome and thank you for your interest in Unicon's Navigate Identity System. My name is Dave Mendez. I am the Senior Director of Critical Infrastructure here at Unicon, as well as the Principal Architect within the Critical Infrastructure Practice. I'd like to talk to you today about our Navigate Identity Solution. Navigate Identity is a modular, hosted, managed, and supported cloud-based identity solution that is based on the ITAP software suite. The ITAP software suite is a collection of software from the InCommon Federation that allows you to build your own identity solution. What we do is Unicon takes care of all the cloud and application infrastructure associated with the software suite that enables you as the client to simply work on managing your identities, taking care of users, roles, access, and groups through touch of the button feature rich interfaces. We handle all of the implementation, the deployment, the configuration, hosting, managed services, and application support for the solution. You do not need to worry about any of that. Your sole focus is on using the applications to provide identity services to your institution. The benefits that come with Navigate are numerous. However, we've given four that we know are very important for higher education. First, Unicon itself has over 85 plus years in experience within higher education. And you couple that with our deep expertise within the identity domain, we're able to help you configure and take full advantage of all of the ITAP software suite components that can be included in Navigate. What does this allow you to do? It reduces your risk. You do not have to worry about the security of the environment, the performance, its ability to scale, the uptime, it's all responsibilities of Unicom. We take care of that for you. In addition, you don't have to do any maintenance tasks with the software. We handle all of the upgrades within the solution. We take care of security patches that allows you to focus just on using the applications. Another benefit is that we have no hidden license fees. It is a fixed cost solution that will not increase as your identities increase. That's different from a commercial solution in most cases. This allows you for much easier budget planning as a multi-year contract comes in. We're able to provide you a fixed price so you know what your costs are going to be regardless if your identities begin to increase. So as discussed, the Income and Trusted Access Platform, or ITAP, is the identity and access management suite of software designed to integrate with your existing IT systems. It was developed by the higher education community for higher education. And because of that, it provides software that meets the unique needs of an ident institution's identity requirements. We use three components within Navigate. We can provide a shibboleth, a midpoint, and or a grouper. If you're not familiar, Shibboleth is your single sign-on, your identity provider. If you're unfamiliar with that as well, it is one of the most widely deployed federated identity solutions on the planet. And one of its key features is it lets you control the release of your identity information to systems so you don't have to give everything to them. It is very popular within higher ed, and we can provide it with a Navigate solution. Midpoint is your identity management and identity governance solution. What it does, its main focus, is it provides a unified identity layer. It allows you to have a centralized location to manage your identities, allowing you to provision or deprovision users. It works by connecting to source of truth systems and then pushing said information out to applications, services that require the identity information. Grouper is an enterprise access policy management system that allows you to set permissions and associate authorization to set applications based off settings that you provide. What this allows you to do is use the same group across many places, many systems, which lets you easily manage who can have access to what resource. It provides an excellent group attestation function, allowing you to ensure that you are staying on top of who has access to what across your platforms. Another good feature is it takes central IT out of the mix. You can delegate application or resource administrators to manage their positions without any fear of violating security requirements. So the Income and Trusted Access Platform, its goal 
is to streamline the identity workflow across your IT landscape. What it does is inside this automation, you have your institutional systems record or source of truth. This can be a student information system, your human resources, your CRM, places that are housing identity information. The person registry, which is what Midpoint serves out as Navigate, connects with these systems through connectors, whether that is a connector to a banner system, whether it is a connector to a SQL database, whether that is a CSV file. However, you are going to want to provide the information, which is flexible. Midpoint pulls this in, and it begins to give you a standardized location to view and modify identity information. It works with Grouper, which also will connect into systems to pull information or pulls information from Midpoint. It allows you, again, to manage your access policy and grant entitlements. From there, Midpoint and Grouper will then connect and begin to provision and deprovision users. It will begin sending these this information over to your campus and external service providers, your applications, your LDAP, your active directories. It begins to send all those so they can use the information to manage, to provide access to those users. It also will use the IDP, which can come in to authenticate and provide access requests across. So this, everything is centralized and streamlined from a certain, a specific solution. So you don't have multiple areas of where to set identities, provide access over in this system, which could be different than access over in another said system. That's the beauty of this solution. It gives you a centralized location that allows you to customize it to meet the needs of what you need to provide for identity across your institution. And with that, we're going to turn it over to our demo. In this demo, we're going to show you the mid features of Midpoint and Grouper at a high level so you can kind of see how these interfaces work and how you how you would interact with them. Logging into each of these is, is accomplished through the Shibboleth IDP. Please keep in mind that because Navigate is modular, you don't need to have the Shibboleth IDP from this Navigate. It can easily integrate with your existing IDP. That is not a problem as well. Again, that is one of the benefits of this. All at a fixed cost based off what which components you decide to use. And with that, I will turn it over for the demonstration. Uh, so welcome. We're, as Dave mentioned, there are several pieces to the Navigate platform, and we're going to discuss Midpoint. Midpoint is an open source full identity and access management suite. Uh, it has identity provisioning and management features along with governance and other things. It includes a highly scalable and flexible uh, engine for, for provisioning and matching identities, uh, which is a nice feature in higher education when you have multiple sources of truth. Uh, you, uh, as Dave mentioned, you can use Midpoint by itself or with Grouper. And this demo today will cover uh, an example of Midpoint and Grouper integrated together. So let's take a look at Midpoint here. Uh, I'm going to log in through SSO, Shibboleth IDP. And now uh, we're going to be taken into Midpoint as an administrator. Uh, as an administrator or super user in Midpoint, we have access to everything in the GUI and for the most part, everything in Midpoint. Um, as you can see in the left-hand menu here, the, the interface is broken up into logical groupings of objects. Um, so you, you can quickly navigate to the pieces of midpoint that you need to, to manage or administrate. At the top is self-service, and this is every user that would be able to log into midpoint, you are able to govern and control that, um, has self-service abilities, and you can enable them all, disable them all, and do what you'd like to do. But generally, they, the, if you allow them to, they can see their profile, credentials, uh, change their password, uh, or use the shopping cart to request access um, if you're allowed to do that. As an administrator, we get a dashboard and we can see at a glance the system um, uh, specifics and metrics. And then we jump into the specific areas for managing midpoint. So these are the core objects in Midpoint, uh, our users are identities, right? And 
in midpoint, you are not limited to a single type or a single instance of a user object. Uh, you could have multiple user objects per identities. Uh, you can do m multiple different things. You are given a dynamic search ability up here. You can search on many different attributes that you are able to customize. And if that's not good enough, you can actually go into an advanced search and do whatever you'd like. You are able to select and edit an identity. So you can go in here and um, look at the information about a user. You can uh, reconcile a user and make sure that all their data is up to date. That is midpoint terminology. You can uh, um, change data about a user and uh, you can look at all their fields. So in midpoint, it comes out of the box with your basic standard first name, last name, email. However, in higher ed, we have a need for things like identity ID, um, maybe a net ID or login ID, perhaps a group or subject ID, uh, affiliations. We could create those if we so desire right here. Uh, and SSN hash, like that's, that's, that's a useful thing. Um, so all of those things are, you can extend midpoint schema nearly infinitely and create the attributes that you need to do to, to manage your identities at your institution. The attributes can be multi-valued. They can be other types, um, Boolean, dates, that sort of thing, like date of birth here. Along with this view on users, you're able to see everything they have access to in a single glance and a little bit of why. You're also able to see everything that they are on. These are external systems, projections into external systems. So this person has come from the employee records and uh, they are in the grouper subject source. At least that's what we can tell here. And we can also look at the assignments in midpoint, which are is where they're going, uh, what, what's happening to them and what kind of affiliations or decorations that this identity has. Besides users, uh, you get other objects over here, orgs, roles, services. Those are, um, are similar in function. And again, we use those for roles as an overloaded term in identity management, but we use them for many different things. And basically, there's no real limits in Bitpoint. You can configure these to do whatever you need to do. With Midpoint, we have to talk to external systems. And we do they do that via resources. There are no black boxes unless you want to install on your external system. Midpoint reaches out to your external system and grabs the data, as it were. Uh, your HR system might be a SQL database or a CSV file somewhere. Uh, your LDAP directory is going to speak LDAP protocol to go talk to your LDAP directory in your at your institution. Um, perhaps it's even a REST API. It, it'll go out to, say, a Graph API and go and grab that information if you connect uh, configure a resource to do that. So all connections, whether they're inbound or outbound, um, are, are sources of truth, as we would call the inbound in, in identity management. Uh, these are all configured as resources. Midpoint puts no restrictions on these. Uh, you can make them inbound and outbound at the same time. You are given a nice GUI to, and wizard to walk you through setting up these resources. You can make changes in real time and test them out. And you have ability to set the mappings directly in the, the resource. So let's say this one is primarily an outbound. Um, so I don't like this. So I'm going to script it. And I can do largely whatever I wanted in here. Then uh, you're able to go through and set up how they, the matches and what happens when users are added or, or deleted. And you're finally able to simulate what would happen on the resource. And the, this is all internal midpoint terminology. We won't get too far into the weeds here, but let's go to an HR system. A big need in higher ed is to have an HR system, an SIS system, probably multiple SIS systems. Um, and there might be even more that are your sources of truth. Midpoint has built-in smart correlation, which you can match the multiple sources of truth and identities. Uh, it also has the ability to have simulations. So you can simulate what might happen. Now this user is already linked, but let's just play along and think that they weren't. You can do import preview here and see what would happen if Midpoint were to add this user. In this case, the user, uh, it matches an existing user. So you can see that the user inside of Midpoint, the identity inside of Midpoint is modified. And we can actually click and see 
uh, what it might do when it processes. In this case, the user was already linked, so there's not a lot of work there. And it's showing us that there might be some outbound changes to LDAP as a result of re reprocessing this HR record. Now, you can have a simulation for just a single task like or a single action like we just saw here, or you can actually run it against the whole resource and see all of the changes, all of the additions and, and, and things. There's also a dispute process. So if the user maybe matches two identities already in midpoint or more, um, then you can it'll go into cases and you can actually look at the dispute and then mark what it should do. Maybe forget about this. Maybe this is a bad record. Or you could correlate the identity and match them because you know, even though it has, doesn't have all the data we told Midpoint about, it, you know it's the same person and it's going to always correlate it for the future. You do have that ability. That leads us to um, how do we process this data? Well, Midpoint isn't typically a batch system. So as we saw there in that simulation, it's going to make the outbound changes immediately as it knows them. In fact, if I click this button, it made the outbound changes right now into LDAP that, it, that was based on this record in HR. So really, all outbound changes are immediate. You can change that, but they, they are immediate. And that's a great benefit. So everything's up to date as much as possible. Then it becomes a case of how often do I want to check my inbound systems for changes? And that's where we have server tasks. And these server tasks are set up. We set them up. You, you're able to configure these completely. You set them up. Um, to run, let's say, on the HR system. So we run on the HR system and we run it maybe every hour and check for changes, and then we pull them in. If the resource has Delta timestamps, so timestamps saying, hey, this user has been updated, and it can be any type of resource, SQL, API, they all can have them. If you do, do have that, you can run a live sync. And those you can run even fre more frequent because you're not running against the whole record of people in that in that or objects in that resource. So in that case, you would run the live sync and you could run them every 30 seconds, five seconds, whatever interval, an hour, days, whatever interval you prefer. But the live syncs only grab the recently updated. This means that once Midpoint gets through all your HR systems and SIS systems and checks for updates, and perhaps even does a full reconciliation, again, everything is up to date. It is all audited. There is full audits. And you can see the results in the GUI and go interrogate the results and, and do whatever you need to do. So those are resources and external systems. We're going to step back a little bit here and go into organizations. So roles, like I said, and affiliations and assignments, they all decorate the identity of and say something. In this case, we've set up roles to be um, higher level, I am what I call business or affiliation roles, and they're like students, guests, that sort of thing. Um, but we have a need to bring in more information from Grouper. So Grouper does um, the fine green entitlement access and all the, the checking and, and excluding, denying, all those things, good things that we want. And Midpoint isn't reliably able to determine who should be in the LMS system from our source data that we have there. Now, we could link with that data and certainly hook all that in, but Grouper already has that information over there. So what we've done is we brought Grouper groups into Midpoint, and uh, the, the, there, there's, there's many different ways that you can bring them in, but generally, we bring them in with uh, policy groups or groups saying, these are the LMS admins. These are your Zoom admins. These are your Zoom regular users, so on and so forth. It makes it simpler in Midpoint, and as you can see here, we have that set up. So if you click on LMS faculty, these people were provisioned from Grouper through the internet to Grouper connector. And uh, these people come over and they have all rights and responsibilities now in the LMS faculty system. In Midpoint's terms, we do that via inducement into the uh, target system. And if you look at the target system, it's another resource <laughs> and um, it, it dumps it out into an LMS that's picked up uh, by Canvas. So that is, uh, that is, in a nutshell, how you might be able to, to, to use some of these things. This is a very high level view. Um, in, a, in actual operation, there's much more that you could see here and we could do and talk about. Um, but again, this is a simple explanation of how to use Midpoint and also integrate Midpoint uh, with Grouper. Uh, finally, um, I'm just going to go into what can you do in the Navigate Midpoint and what do you get with Unicons Navigate Midpoint. So Unicons Navigate Midpoint, you have access to the full GUI. You are not restricted. You have access to the REST API. 
and you're able to real time edit logging, for example, or other system information. And you're able to view the logs as well. So you can do nearly everything you want to do in Midpoint. There are a few things that might have to be done and you'd open up a ticket with uh, world-class uh, Unicon's open source support where we, uh, any problem, any question, anything that you have with Midpoint, you just create a ticket and we'll help you out. And with that, that is the end of my demo. Now I'll be talking about Grouper and how this fits into the Navigate uh, solution. And as Dave mentioned, Grouper is a centralized access management solution. It focuses on managing and creating access policies. Now as identity and access management staff, we have all, there are all different needs for departments and their applications to control access to the resources. And if you didn't have a centralized system, every use case for that would be a different piece of software, a different batch job, or some other special connection to each individual system. And that becomes hard to manage after a certain point. Grouper is a nice solution to centralize things in one place. As identity and management, identity and access management staff, we can go to the Grouper system, set up access policies for any number of applications. Now, even though this is centralized, what you can do with Grouper is delegate the day-to-day -day management of the various policies to the application owners, the data owners, and other people who are the local experts for their particular resources. And that lessens the load on the IAM staff because they don't need to deal with the daily one-off tickets to grant a user access to an application. You can set up an access policy, grant privileges in Grouper to the real owners, and they can be responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of their policies. Grouper also has auditing capabilities. Grouper audits and logs who has access to a group, when they had access, why do they have access, and also who gave them access. You can look up all of that information very easily through a web-based interface. It also has automation to manage access and policies. If you imagine all the different access policies and the different people that need to be managed in policy groups, if you had to individually take people out and add people in, that would not be easily scalable. But what Grouper can do is connect with the various systems of record, importing and synchronized data on a regular basis. This keeps memberships uh, with timely updates, but with minimal manual intervention. Now, even though it's automated, you still have the capabilities of, of having ad hoc groups to add onto the policies. These ad hoc groups would also be managed by the application owners for distributed management. Grouper also has the capability of setting rules and triggers on groups to set constraint constraints on who can be in a group and who can't be a group dependent on other factors. Um, Grouper provides easy group attestation. Now, this is a process in IAM management where group, man group memberships, roles, or access privileges are reviewed and verified at regular intervals to ensure that they're still accurate and appropriate. You can set periodic attestation on a group, which is a way to get data owners to affirm that they've reviewed the membership of a group and that it's, that it's correct. Um, this, this attestation action is also one of the things that you can audit if there's any question as to when the group was last reviewed and who did it. In, in comparison with other commercial products, Grouper makes uh, group attestation easy and it takes the burden of validating hundreds of thousands of groups off of complex or manual processes. Uh, the most important use of Grouper is that once an access policy has been constructed, it is published or provisioned to various targets that are your policy enforcement points. This means that you don't need to go to each target and manage the policies. These include, for example, LDAP, SQL databases, Active Directory, cloud providers, or midpoint, and many others. Uh, now let me demonstrate the user interface and the various aspects of it that I've uh, mentioned. Uh, first, let me log into the user interface. So here I am with the same Shibboleth SSO front end that uh, you also saw with Midpoint. So it's a common uh, single sign-on uh, authentication for this. I'm going to log on as one of our demo users. 
who has full access to the system. And that way you'll be able to see all the, the different features of Grouper. Now, Grouper represents access policies conceptually as groups, hence the name Grouper. And those groups contain members. These members come from the external systems of, of record, such as HR databases, student information systems, or LDAP or Active Directory um, services. These sources would contain records for people in various roles, such as employees, faculty, students, affiliates, consultants, et cetera, anybody that would need to be in a policy. Now, you saw that I logged on as Bob Anderson. What I'm going to do now is go to my record so you can uh, see what my data and group information looks like. So here's my record in the top half here. Now this comes from the external system of record in, in this demo case, this is an HR system. And you see, I have my employee number as my unique identifier. I also have my net ID as a secondary identifier and then various attributes um, that is pulled from the HR system. We see here in the bottom half, these are the groups that I'm a member of. And notice based on some of these tags, you can see there are a few different types of groups, groups here. Uh, let me first show what the sysadmin group looks like as an introduction to groups. Uh, this sysadmin group is a sp special one. This governs who has access to Grouper itself. So you can see here, I'm Bob Anderson, I am in this group, and therefore I have full access to all of the Grouper functions. And you can see here, there are six, six members of this group and the icons look a little different. You see five of these are users and these come from the HR system. One of these with a different icon, this is a group. So you can put people into groups, but you can also put groups into groups. And through the grouper inheritance mechanism, the members of the, the upstream group indirectly become members of this group. If I look at this identity and access management staff group, which makes up the members of here, uh, we see those five users. And you can also see here that this is loaded from a batch job that synchronizes from the HR system on a regular basis. So this, this is an example of one type of group called a basis group. These are loaded from external systems. And uh, in this example, not only is my IAM staff group loaded by this, but you can see here every department in my HR system is loaded all at the same time. So this loading process does not happen on a group by group basis. You can set up one job and it loads a large number of groups and keeps them in sync on a regular basis. If I go back to my record here to show a few different groups. So we saw the sysadmin group. We saw this basis group here. I, I'm in a few other role-based groups and you see the reference tag here. So these are called reference groups. Um, the all staff group and the all faculty and staff group these are used for convenience. Uh, not everybody knows the department codes and the internal names for departments that they might need to use. So these reference groups are a more user-friendly and possibly um, aggregated cohorts of people that um, can, can also be used in addition to basis groups as building blocks for policies. And notice here I'm also in one policy group. So the heart of Grouper is managing access policies. So let's show what that looks like. On the left here, I have folders for organization. Uh, in this case, all of my applications live in the same subfolder. So you can see here a few sample applications that I've set up here. If I look in the GitHub and open this up, I see a few different folders. Security is for internal management of the policy groups. So I can put various people in an admins, a readers, and an updaters group. And depending on what group you're in, you would have different levels of access for, for either reading the memberships of access policy groups or updating them with memberships as they change or uh, creating and deleting the access policies themselves. The access policies live in the policy folder. 
And in this case, I've got a sample or a subfolder here, and I have a sample group. Uh, for example, in this in this GitHub demo, here's an access to a specific repository. So I've set up this policy. I've put people in here, and this has a um, little bit of a structure to it. If I view this in a visual representation, what I can see is that this policy, which is in the green here, it's made up of uh, an allow group minus a deny group. So instead of managing the policy itself, we've split this off into sublevels. So as the data owner, you would manage people in this allow group. You would put groups and users into this. Uh, if you needed people to be removed from these policies, you can put people in a local deny group, or you can use a reference group, which are, which are this set of global deny groups. So these might be used for uh, emergency removals of people if they have had um, a security incident or if they've had an emergency dis dismissal. Once they're put into this group, this bubbles up into this deny group, which is subtracted from the allow, and that becomes the access policy. So that all happens um, nearly instantaneously. Notice here, this allow group is made up of two different subgroups. We have a local allow manual group. So this is used for ad hoc additions. Notice that there are two members in this group and then four other members which come from a basis group, the infrastructure staff group. So that there, the net total of this is that there are six people in the allow group. There are zero members in the deny and six is the number of people that, that are in my access policy. Now, let me show you one of the features that I mentioned, which is called attestation. So as I, as I showed in the visual view, this policy group is made up of a few different subgroups. And one practice that tends to help out, especially with these ad hoc manually maintained groups is called attestation. So let me go into this group and notice there, there are two people, they've manually been added on here. What I can do in this group as either an IAM staff or as the owner of the application with administrative access, I can set attestation on this group and that's what this looks like. So currently there's no attestation set up. I will change that. So this has attestation settings. And notice the options here. So, Attestation is now enabled for this group. Uh, in this case, the default is to send mail alerts. And this will go to the data owners and application managers who have either update or administrative access to this group. So what happens is on a regular basis, they will get emails with a link to this group, reminding them to periodically, um, on the data that it's due, to uh, review the membership of this group and perform the attestation. And notice the default here is 180 days. We can change this to a custom number of days. And in this case, I'm not going to mark this as reviewed today. So that instead of six months from now, this is going to be due today. And when we do that, notice what happens in the membership tab here. This is what the application managers would uh, see when they log into this. So in addition to the regular view of the membership, they'll see this bright red text saying that the membership needs to be attested. They will review this and all they need to do is click this button. And so that gets logged as an audit action. And uh, we can see in the audit functions here, so if I look at the audit log for this group, we can see all the all of the actions that have been added to this group. Uh, we can see when the group was created. We can see who did it. Uh, we can see somebody added users. In this case, this was the um, 
a bash job that set this up so there's no user associated with it. And we can see here finally that Bob Anderson on this date attested this group. Uh, another feature of Grouper that helps with management is we can set enabled and disabled dates on people. So I can go into one of these users, edit their membership, and notice here I can choose a start date or an end date on that membership. And when that date hits, the user will be either added in the group or disabled from the group. And we can do that for existing users or when we add members to a group. And in this box, this is where I put in either usernames or group names. And notice here, there's also a start date and an end date. Through the use of rules, we can set um, triggers on a group. For example, uh, when somebody is added to a group, there could be an automatic end date of say 30 days or some number of days in the future. Um, we can set other rules, for example, requiring membership in another group to be able to be added to a group. If you're not a member of some reference group, then you would be rejected and can't be added. Uh, you can exclude certain memberships, put a limits on the number of groups in a folder, number of memberships in a group, uh, length of a group name, things like that. Uh, Grouper has some tools to make constructing access policies easier. Now, in the simplest case, you can just create a simple group, set provisioning on it, and it will go out to the target. And you can manage that adding and removing members. Now, we can also have a more complex policy. And what that looks like is there's a template that we can run, which will create that complex policy that we saw. So I give it a name. So both an internal and a display friendly name, I can add a descript description for it. When I click next, notice I have a number of options here. This will create the policy group. We'll add a tag to it. We'll create that, that uh, subgroup, the allow group. We'll create the deny group. And we've set this up in the demo so that, so that this automatically is aware of a global deny group. And by default, it adds that to the deny group. So we can, we can leverage that global reference group for that. Once I submit that, you can see here, it creates the policy group and the, uh, then the allow and the deny group. So there are built-in templates like this policy creation group. We can also create custom policies through a scripting language, which we can manage uh, through the user interface. Uh, provisioning is one of the key features of Grouper. So we've set up for the demo a lot of different places that groups could be provisioned to. Let me go to that now so you can see what we have set up. This is just a small sampling of the different places it can go to. If I choose to add one, you can see the full list of all of these. So we have cloud providers, we have LDAP, we have SQL, we have a midpoint integration, and then we have a lot of one-offs um, you know, for Box, Remedy, et cetera. So for a group, what this means is if I have an access policy here, I can go to provisioning. And these are all the provisioners and I can choose to provision or not provision to any one of these. So right now you can see this one group is provisioned to the group of names provisioner. Uh, now let's show some, some more under the hood of this. Uh, first, I'll show you external systems. So these are all the integrations for both the inputs. So these would be the loader jobs, the batch jobs that synchronize with your systems of record. And these are also tied to the provisioning systems for the targets. So you can see the different options that we have here. 
So similar to the provisioning, we have SQL, we have databases, we have cloud providers, we have message queues, um, we have OIDC for authentication, we have web service, REST API, um, uh, URL templates with usernames and passwords, uh, et cetera. So in my system, I have set up SMTP so that the attestation and other emails go out. We have an integration with the LDAP system, which is used for our subject source. And we have an integration to two different databases. Um, these could be used for both pulling in uh, attribute information to create those basis groups, or they could be provisioned out to those SQL sources. We also have the subject sources itself. And in this case, I've set this up with a with an LDAP subject source. And I configure what fields I want to pull in from that subject source, define what is the subject ID, other unique identifiers, searching criteria, and sorting to make looking up users possible. Uh, Demon jobs is also a major part of Grouper. So these perform the background processes that uh, do the provisioning, do the loader jobs, do custom um, batch jobs that we can we can create through uh, scripting language. Uh, Demon jobs represent various batch jobs that run in the background. A normal Grouper installation will have multiple containers running. Uh, you'll probably have one container for your user interface, another one for web services, and then one or more to run these, these uh, daemon processes. Provisioners are one type of daemon job. The loader jobs that update the basis groups are also jobs. Uh, there are also jobs for sending notifications, reports, and you can also use a custom scripting language to create your own custom batch jobs. We can configure Grouper itself through the user interface, so we don't need to do any backend editing of text files. Now, Grouper has a number of files that it keeps things in. For example, if I look at Grouper loader properties, many of these properties are defined in internal base files, but we can also see what we have customized by filtering this. And we can see here, we've customized the URL. So this goes in e emails. Uh, this is where we, we would custom that global deny group. And here we've set up the SMTP server, et cetera. So this can all be configured through the user interface. There's also auditing and history of this. So we can see all the changes that have been made in the system and who did it and when it happened. And we also have the capability of reverting back. So we just click on something and revert to an old value and it would just reverse any change that we want to move out of. Grouper is a scripting language and this is called Grouper Shell, also known as GSH. Uh, you can use this in two different ways. We, uh, you can use it to run a template to perform multiple steps to create an access policy. Uh, you can extend this with custom templates that can perform actions specific to your institution. For example, you can use it to create the access policy, set up provisioning, uh, automatically add specific members to the group, perform other sanity checking and things like that. The other thing you can use the scripting for is to create custom daemon jobs. So if the built-in daemons aren't enough, you can create uh, a batch job, write it all within the UI, schedule it and look at the logs as it runs its processes. Uh, so in conclusion, Grouper ensures that your organization maintains strict control over who can access it in a way that scales with your growth. By centralizing and automating access management, it reduces costs, minimizes security risks, and improves compliance, uh, which are all critical concerns for executive leadership. Thank you for watching this demo. Navigate Identity is a fully managed cloud-based identity solution that is tailored specifically for the needs of higher education. Unicon takes care of all aspects of the solution, including hosting, 
application upgrades, security patching, monitoring, and application support. You are able to focus on using the solution to provide superior service to your constituents instead of taking care the time to manage the application environments. Navigate Identity uses software that was built by the higher education community to solve the unique needs of identity requirements at an institution. It uses one of the most widely deployed identity providers in the world, Shibboleth, along with Midpoint and Grouper for handling all aspects of identity management from user provisioning to complex group management, auditing, reporting, as well as integrations with multiple systems. Navigate Identity ensures swift, protected access to all types of identities that can be experienced at, at an institution, such as students, faculty, staff, guests, student employees, and alumni. It can integrate with legacy systems to support diverse permission models, and it's all offered to you for a fixed price, no matter the number of identities. Thank you again for watching this demo. We're excited to bring this solution to the educational community, and we look forward to working with you in the future.